Well, thank you for joining me, beautiful Sam, uh, for joining us today on A Heartful Future, um, all the way from Newcastle. Is that yes, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. I so love speaking. Zoom. We can okay. like connect from all over the world and all over Australia. Um, and so, Sam, you work for, is it Acacia? Acacia. Yes, Acacia. Acacia Play. Beautiful. Yeah. How, what does that name mean? So it, acacia is a beautiful um, pioneer plant in the permaculture world. And so uh, you probably would know them more as a wattle tree or beautiful, um, yeah, those golden balls of fluff. Um, <laughs> and acacia trees are known as a pioneer plant and they hold nitrogen in their roots and help support the smaller the smaller trees as they grow and bloom. And, yeah. and are they located up where you are as well? Those well, or acacia not? trees are found all over Australia. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I think wattle, um, those beautiful golden balls. That yeah. yeah. And I love that idea of the acacia helping those smaller trees grow and find the light. Yeah. And yeah. so the idea is that we are the acacia trees to our beautiful children and we can grow and support them through their journey of yeah. life. Mm. oh gorgeous that's so beautiful and so tell, tell us a little bit about acacia play what do, what do you do <laughs> so acacia play is a beautiful nature play group that was created by sarah when her daughter was only five months old um, and she was really searching for community and connection in those early days of motherhood and her family own an incredible um, permaculture property called Purple Pear Farm, yeah. which is where one of our Acacia Play locations is currently held. And fast forward four years, we have now two properties, um, beautiful permaculture properties that we are able to welcome in more community and support families through those early seasons of parenting. Beautiful. And so what ages, what children, ages children do come? Do they come? So I I feel I often get this question. People often ask, how old does my child need to be to yeah. come to to play? And I really welcome, I say that we can have children from, you know, we have pregnant mums come looking for connection. Yeah. Their baby is born. They still, you know, connection is such a vital part of mm. who we are and what we all you know, need. Yeah. And yeah, so I definitely, I really recommend that, you know, everybody can use time outside in nature. And so we mostly have children from zero to five years that join us each week, but we also welcome homeschoolers and we have grandparents that join us. Um, we yeah. also created a beautiful drop-off program um, just this last term, which really allows us to explore some more of the concepts a little bit more in depth with children um, three to seven years old. Okay, beautiful. Yeah, is it like a structured day for them or is it more like that free ex exploring nature? Yeah, so we there is always a beautiful um, experience to enjoy at Acacia Play. And when I'm creating these experiences, I really have sustainability in mind or they are a circular experience where whatever we are creating can be returned back to the earth. Mm. Um, and that is a really important value of Acacia Play and what we are creating. I think it also encourages families to really lean into that and encourage them to do it at home with their own children as well. I think in this world, we can we can get caught up in the Pinterest worthy experiences or <laughs> you know these beautiful aesthetically pleasing um, crafts that you can see on social media. But yeah. I always ask myself, can a child do this quite openly themselves? And what does it, in it encourage? And what conversations does it promote? Um, and so our experience are always, our experiences are always quite open-ended as well and allow the children to adapt it as they need or as they feel called to. And I think that's a really important value of Acacia Play and mine as well. Beautiful. Yeah, that's lovely. I love that idea of kids sort of just arriving and going, mm. wow, 
<laughs> you know and then yeah there's always so we've got our beautiful experiences but there are so many moments of just being and yeah, yeah so we also <laughs> have um moments of you know exploring the beautiful properties that we have and noticing the subtle changes that occur through the seasons mm. and really tuning into that and I I do really recommend that people come quite regularly because they will be able to see the changes within the garden and that really yeah. allows you to connect on a deeper level yeah, be, cool. yeah. it's bringing awareness to that as well mm, definitely and do you have um people that are you know live in the city don't really know about nature don't really understand the seasons and plants do people like that want to interact with acacia too yeah definitely um so I don't know if you know much about Newcastle but we it's a beautiful coastal town and yeah. where Purple Pear Farm is that we hold acacia clay it is up in the Hunter Valley so it's um probably about 20 minutes from the coast and our other location is about yeah 20 minutes the other side of the coast so we get yeah. people that have small suburban backyards to people that have big properties but aren't quite sure how to foster that within their children or grow that appreciation within their children and their families. Um, and then there are the families that are just really searching for connection and to connect with families that are similar minded and have the same values as they do. I, and that is what drew me to Acacia Play all those years ago when my daughter was only young, I was searching for community and I wasn't quite sure where I fit in the world of motherhood. And yeah, yeah I landed at Acacia Play and yeah, now here I am. Yeah, now you're here and you own it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Which yeah. I'm I'm so grateful for. Um yeah, Sarah had these beautiful big visions and Acacia Play had served its purpose in her season of life and she's mm. gone on to create some amazing ventures in the world and mm -hmm. she had offered for me to take Acacia Play a few times and I said, oh no, it's not, it's not the right time for myself. And then the more I sat with it, the more I realised that Acacia Play is bigger than me. It was such a it is such an incredible space of community and um connection for children and their families and not just to each other but to the land and their awareness for the world around them and yeah so here I am <laughs> yeah yeah it's so exciting and mm. I guess you really felt the impact it had on you and your children as mm. well is that right yeah it just it yeah. has created such a profound ripple in our world and I really wanted to um, honour and bring that to the families that are to come and that will continue to join us at Acacia Play um, yeah. now and in the years beyond I guess. Yeah gorgeous beautiful and so tell us a little bit about you and your background with nature can you tell us like your earliest memory as mm -hmm. a nature kid? <laughs> I, I feel like it did all it began right back in my early childhood where my mum really fostered a sense of connection to the world around us. We didn't have, or well, we did have a TV, but it was a really old TV where you, it didn't have a remote and you had to dial to change the stations and tune yeah. it in. So we didn't watch that very often at all. And, you know, we were the last ones to kind of get the internet when it came, you know, dial up internet yeah. when it came out. And I Sounds like your mum had a plan. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't know if it was just intentional. Or <laughs> intentional or if she just felt drawn to that. And yes. I remember that if it was a sunny day, we, we could not be inside. Like it was very rare for us to be inside. We were always outside playing. And mm. I I actually grew up with the bush at my back door and these incredible sand dunes. And um, I grew up in more of my country, which is just stunning. And the sand dunes are almost, well, they were untouched when I was growing up. And I didn't quite know what the concept of a sit spot was at mm. the time, but there was a tree and a sand dune that I would go and sit under for so many years. Um, and it was just a space that really held me through 
all of the seasons, all of those teenage years and early um, young adulthood. And even now it's a place that I go with my children. Um, and I am still able to sit under this same tree on this sand dune that overlooks all of the um, the water and the, you know, it's just beautiful while my children play and enjoy that space. And gorgeous. it's, yeah, it held me so effortlessly. Yeah. And so nature's always been a consistent yeah. in your life that can support you. Yeah. yeah definitely. Yeah, that's gorgeous. And so how old are your kids? So I have Miller, who is five, and Max, who turned three this week. <laughs> ah, happy birthday, Max. Yeah, <laughs> exciting. Yeah, and so what's that like, owning a business and having two young children, running a household? Is it What's the juggle like? <laughs> yeah, it is a juggle. That, <laughs> that is probably um, the best word to describe it at the moment. And it's really about... I feel going with the ebbs and flows and I'm really conscious of being on my phone in front of my children. So I often will do things in the moments of in between. So once they're asleep, you'll notice that's when I'm posting our, you know, um, what has happened that day or in the moments where I've ducked on to pop a load of washing and I can post something there or reply to an email or a comment. And I hope that they can look back at this time and reflect that I was a present mum and that they were able to be surrounded by this beautiful community that we do have and they won't notice all of those moments that you know those little moments where I I feel like I'm not probably as present but they don't probably witness that if that makes any sense at all yeah <laughs> yeah no it does make sense it does and I think um we were just talking a little bit before about how a lot of people don't really see unless they've got their own business and they're a sole trader and they work by themselves mm -hmm. they don't understand the amount of work that a business takes yeah. to, um, because we're wearing all the hats oh and it can yeah. be really and then your mother your mothering as well so um yeah hats all the hats off to mm. you um, I do have a beautiful team who um facilitate the sessions which I am so yeah. thankful for oh great um, yeah. but yes behind the scenes it is yeah just me <laughs> just uh, yeah. yeah it's pretty it's a lot at times um but I am incredibly grateful to be able to be doing it and it is somewhat a creative outlet creating it the beautiful um, reels and I often when I am creating them I often find myself just smiling and just beaming from within when I'm reflecting on the day or the conversations that we've had or mm. yeah it's just a really beautiful place to be and to mm. be able to witness everything that happens throughout the, the sessions. Yeah. And so you bring your kids to the sessions? Yeah. yeah. So my daughter has just started school this year and but up until this year, she has joined us. Um, so yeah. And Max, I actually started working with Acacia Play when he was, he wasn't quite one. And so um, I still remember the day that Sarah asked me to join her at Acacia Play and it was the 22nd of the 2nd, 22. And <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was still a, a baby and he was in the carrier and oh. yeah, he would sleep while we were facilitating and beautiful he's grown up with it in within the space. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Which I think a lot of our community holds my children as much as they hold me and hold each other. That yeah. they know who they are, they know their personalities and what they need and what they don't need and that's a really, really special part of um, being a mum in business is yeah. having people see you for what you are and what you're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For being yeah. a human. Yeah. And seeing your family grow up as well. Yeah. In that. yeah. They almost become part of your family. Yeah. You know? Oh, most definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure like, speaking from a woman I that would be really attractive to me as well like coming to a facilitated 
um, thing with my children and then going, oh my God, the people that are facilitating have babies too. Oh, wow. Like this is, Mm -hmm. it just brings a really warm feeling to me when I think about that. Yeah, Yeah, it it is. It is really beautiful. And yeah, I'm Mm -hmm. so honored to be doing this work. Yeah, that's so lovely. And you, the way that you're talking, I can feel your heart kind of growing and growing and growing um, with light. And um, so how would you say that like this, did you think, do you think that your heart kind of led you to this work? Yeah, definitely. When I reflect upon the years and my story from leaving school and the jobs that I've held throughout that time, it Mm. all just makes sense. And even the the harder, more challenging times, Mm. it just all, I wouldn't be who I am. I wouldn't have met the people or or have the skills that I do have now to, yeah, it it just all has fallen into place so effortlessly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's so lovely. And so um, what's next for Acacia Play? Are there bigger things on the horizon? Yeah, I I just, I have acknowledged that I'm in a season of early motherhood still and that I need to lean into that. And I have beautiful big ideas and plans for Acacia Play. But for now, I need to, um, yes, acknowledge where I am and my capacity to be able to hold my children as well as acacia play at the same time and I don't think I can do either a hundred percent if I give one more attention than the other so it is a bit of an ebb and flow at the moment um we've just we've just come back from a big festival which was incredibly fun it was a moms and babies festival and we facilitated a couple of sessions there for the families and I really really enjoy doing that work and being able to connect with people outside of our immediate community and meet people from all areas of Australia which was really really quite special yeah love to welcome in a little bit more of that and yeah I've got some beautiful plans yeah. and collaborations coming up which I'm really yeah. looking forward to oh gorgeous looking forward to seeing what happens <laughs> um so if for our audience there nannies caregivers um, mothers fathers um what would be could you give us some idea of a nature creative project we could do at home with the kids yeah, I think that's the beauty of nature is that the possibilities are endless and infinite and Mm -hmm. I think we just need to look at all of these incredible moments through the eyes of our children and it really gives you a different perspective of what you can create and what you can do from there and like I mentioned before I really try to make things accessible for our families so that they can replicate or be inspired by the experiences at Acacia Play. One of the one of the first things that I would recommend would be creating a sit spot at home mm-hmm. with your children. Can you and explain and what a sit spot is? Yeah, so it is a beautiful uh, concept. I can't quite find where it has originated from. Mm. And like I mentioned before, that I have unconsciously been doing this for many, many years um, before I even knew it was a a concept. Um, But it essentially, you find a beautiful space that you regularly sit at and observe around you. And so that could be simply your backyard or a familiar space that you like to visit and um, enjoy. For me, I, when I had my daughter, we have a really big deck in our backyard. And I remember She was only a couple of months old and I was sitting there with her and I watched our beautiful tree, just the little, um, the little flowers just unfurl. And I thought, how, how much else have I been missing? There's just so much that I have been oblivious to. And I've just kind of been so focused on everything else that I haven't taken the time to sit and actually slowly observe what's happening Mm. around me. And that was really profound for me all the way back then Mm -hmm. and it is something that I've really encouraged in my children and now Miller will 
she's just unconsciously observed, she observes the patterns and what's around her so effortlessly to yeah. the point that we have these beautiful, a beautiful flock of Corellas that fly past our house of an afternoon. And when she sees them, she knows that it's nearly time for dinner. And so it's putting, yeah, putting those moments <coughs> into the rhythm of your days and your weeks. And yeah. as, as your children grow, you can ask them, what can you see? What can you hear? What can you feel? Mm. And you can go through those senses and as they get older again, you can get them to draw, record and write those observations. Um, mm -hmm. And then you may like to create several sit spots and notice the changes within those. And I feel like that is a really beautiful place to start. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. I can I can contest to that, like not just in my own childhood, but also in the kids that I've cared for in the past, like mm -hmm. they just you know, bringing them out to um, nature. I remember one little boy, gosh, he was like two. I think I looked after him from, yeah, like one to three. And he was such a connector to nature, he connected yeah. me, he connected himself, family, everyone around him. And, you know, such a little boy, but mm. we would go down to the little trickling stream and we would just, he would throw rocks into the into the stream he loved it and yeah. sticks anything he could find and we would do that for hours <laughs> like yeah. so long and um he just loved doing that and being there yeah. and that was his sit spot yeah definitely and I children are born investigators they mm -hmm. investigate what's around them and they ponder mm -hmm. these big beautiful questions to make sense of the world around them and they are our greatest teachers I often each week I learn so much from just the children asking questions and me thinking oh yeah that's a really great wonder I actually don't know the answer I'm going to find it out for you and that is you know I think we all need to really lean into that and lean into the children of our future because they have so many beautiful answers um yeah, that yeah. we need to, yeah and do you think, um, going off that question, do you think that what you're doing with children will have an impact on them as they are adults as well? Yeah, definitely. I often reflect on my own childhood and how I have, I did have such a great connection to the natural world as mm -hmm. a child and I still do now as an adult and I'm really drawn to natural spaces when life feels a little bit too much or a little bit too challenging that's what feels easeful for me yeah and my husband didn't quite have the same um experience growing up yeah. and it's we quite we often laugh at it because I didn't watch a lot of movies growing up so I don't get pop pop, oh, pop culture references yeah <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and he is a bit of a movie buff, and he has seen uh -huh. all of the movies, and he's learning so much from myself and from my children. When you know they say, "Oh, Dad, look at this! Look at how this is happening!" or "Did you know?" Yeah. And kind of like he does, he hasn't been able to see the world from that perspective until now. Yeah, so I, I do hope that the children that visit visit us regularly at Acacia Play find that innate love for the natural world um, mm. because it is a consistent and it isn't going anywhere and we yeah. need these children to love and to appreciate all around them so that they grow up wanting to save it and hold it and uh, yeah love and continue to love and appreciate it and create these ripples that will you know it will influence the jobs that they take as an adult it'll influence how they you know um, raise their children and yeah the ripples will continue That's mm. what I mean. yeah I think so too definitely mm. and I think also when what you're doing now is also educating adults mm. like the families that come to the adults can actually bring that home with them yeah we've had some really um amazing families or mums just say to me, I did not know that. And they have created gardens themselves. They've 
started compost they've started growing more flowers because they've you know the from the seeds that we've collected at acacia play they've realized one seed can grow an incredible incredible amount of plants from that one tiny seed and it just yeah it's really quite profound and incredible yeah. to witness yeah that's so lovely to see it must be I don't know just warming to the heart mm. that that's actually happening at home as well yeah. and what from what they're doing is probably influencing people in their lives yeah too. or their children are just simply spending more time outside with them yeah um, and one of the other things that has held me so effortlessly in parenthood is finding mutually fulfilling experiences that both my child my children and I can do that fill our hearts up with mm. so much joy and I guess I hope that that's what Acacia Play can encourage and bring to these families as well. And some of my mutually fulfilling experiences are yeah. you know, going for a walk or going to the bush or the beach or cooking mm. the herbs that we've grown, things that my children really love and I love. And everyone's cup is really full by the end of those experiences. And it just makes parenting feel so much more useful on those really challenging days yeah one of my um most one of my favorite times and places to go to on the more challenging moments of parenting is our local community gardens and we are really lucky to have these beautiful spaces around us that have um beautiful children's spaces within the gardens yeah and I remember Max was only a couple of weeks old and I think it was maybe the first week or the first day that my husband had gone back to work and I was feeling quite stretched in all of the yeah. capacities and it had been weeks of raining nonstop. And so I popped the kids in the car and I said, let's just go to the local community garden. It's not too far away. It's a safe space for us to land. And yeah got there and I don't think I was wearing shoes and I was very disheveled <laughs> yes but there was another mum that was there as well and she had two children and was patiently waiting for her third baby and I'm sure she didn't have shoes on either and yes. <laughs> we were able to connect in that season right in that moment and it was just really really beautiful um and she oh. has gone on to become one of my best friends oh that's that, so lovely yeah that simple interaction we got to know each other more and more and she now also works for Acacia Play. Oh, with wow. Me, which is just, <laughs> when I, it gives me goosebumps every time I think back to that yeah. first moment of meeting and I was feeling awfully vulnerable and yeah. able to connect in that space at that time. And I hope that that's what Acacia Play can provide mm. for so many mums and um, that they feel held and supported when they do walk through mm. those gates. Yeah, that's beautiful. And having people like yourself and also your friend that you met mm. who has gone through, you know, has children and has gone through moments of, you know, craziness and stress, mm. being there, again, as I said before, facilitating, that would be such a beautiful um, reminder to those mothers that, you know, we're all in this together. We can all. Yeah. yeah. And I've walked the path that you've walked and I've you know I've been there I am there I'm still yes very much in the thick of early parenthood um yes yeah yeah beautiful that's so lovely so what we always ask our friends at the end of um our conversations uh this question um how do you follow your heart so how do you follow your heart through your day through your months weeks mm. years I I really believe following our intuition is following our heart and our heart and intuition lead us so many beautiful places if only we're able to tune in and listen to it and mm. now in motherhood I feel like it has allowed me to really lean into that and listen to it wholeheartedly which has led me to these beautiful heartful spaces full of purpose and authenticity I just feel like all of the moments past have started to fall into place mm. once I started listening 
to my heart. Mm. And I am so, so incredibly grateful to be where I am right yeah. now. Beautiful. Mm. And trusting it, you know, trusting yeah. the messages are right and leaning in and, as you said, leaning in, going, okay, yes, I will yeah. do that. I yeah. don't, yeah, I think that's only a um, probably, yeah, since I've become a mum that I really grew into my strength of being able to trust that. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's a, it's a hard road sometimes when you think about that, because I think sometimes you can have a message from your heart and you can go, no, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's not aligned right now. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go this way instead. Um, But you know, we choose the way and then we learn the lesson and we go, okay, Mm -hmm. you need to listen now and go, go this way instead. And yeah, I think motherhood would have, you'd have that daily, right? Yes. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, And it just really makes you, it has allowed me to step into my power and Mm. really um, acknowledge it because I think previously I, I didn't acknowledge, I could feel that feeling, but I always listen to it. And yeah, um, yeah, it has still steered me in the right direction after a few detours, but here (laughs) I am and it feels really, really nice. Yeah. Relating where I am at the moment. Yeah, beautiful. That's so lovely. And I can hear just even from your story and your journey that everything, you know, that you have done and you are doing is led from this space mm. um, and a real embodiment because that's something you have grown up with and, you know, it's in you this and it's sort of now manifesting as your job, you know. Yeah, it's harmful work, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, it definitely mm. is. And so where can people find you? Uh, you can find us. We're most active over on Instagram, which is acacia.play. The beautiful and, Instagram as well, everybody. Oh, yes. <laughs> and <laughs> thank you. And, Lovely. I um, love it. <laughs> oh, thank you, Sarah. It is, yeah, definitely a creative outlet that I enjoy doing um and you can also find us at www.acaciaplay.com.au lovely and all your programs and everything's on there on the website yeah yeah are you all fully booked up or can you are you yes our term one um experiences at the farm booked out before it even began yeah (laughs) i am yeah so honored and it's amazing um and yeah, we're about to launch term two, um, which will be, yeah, equally as wonderful. Yes, of course. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so lovely. Thank you so much, Sam, for joining me today and, you know, telling us your story and about your journey and what has led you to where you are now. Um, I really appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you for the work that you're doing in the world for our children. Um, so, yeah, thanks so much. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> thanks for bringing all these stories to life. Yeah, no, it's such a pleasure talking to like-minded people. So, yeah, thank you so much. Enjoy this beautiful day ahead and we'll talk soon. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you.